And now it's time to talk Navy. The midshipmen start the season with two home games, including a clash with Air Force in week two. Then the first of six straight American Athletic Conference games, including a road trip to Houston. Other spotlight games include a trip to Notre Dame in November and the annual matchup with Army in December. Find all the team schedules and so much more on our website at BehindTheLinesTV.com. And now let's take an even closer look at Navy. The midshipmen played an almost full schedule of 10 games last season despite the pandemic. But the results were anything but acceptable to head coach Ken Niamatololo. So he and his team are looking for a bounce back year in 2021. Will it be reminiscent of the last time Navy had a losing season and then bounce back? Here's Diane Roberts with a preview. Graham, there are no two ways about it. The midshipmen ended the season last year with a disappointing 3-7 and seven record. Annually in the top five in the nation in rushing, the middies weren't even in the top 50 in 2020. Last year was about survival in a lot of ways. I mean, we were Jimmy rigging the offense. We're an option team. Everything starts with the option. And that's where Coach Ken Niamatololo's optimism stems from this season. A spirited option quarterback battle between sophomores Xavier Arline and Ty Lavatai has the 14-year Navy head coach smiling. We know that we won't have to jimmy rig the offense. Things will branch out, but it will branch out from the option. And that branching out includes two dynamic receivers in senior Michael Cooper and junior Mark Walker. On defense, the middies finished strong, holding their last three opponents in 2020 to an average of less than 15 points per game, despite losing all three. And Navy showcases one of the top linebackers in the American Athletic Conference this year in senior Diego Fago. Diego's a tremendous player, all-conference linebacker, plays with amazing intensity, plays with tremendous heart and plays for the name on his jersey because he knows it represents not only him, but his teammates. This is a guy that is really selfless. He bleeds the Navy brand. But the schedule may prove to be the real reality check. Eight of Navy's 12 opponents had winning records last season. Still, after winning just three games last year, Coach Niamatololo is taking solace from the 2019 season. That year, the Middies followed up a 310 campaign in 2018 with an 11-2 top 20 finish the next year. This team reminds me of the 19 team. Nobody liked what happened last year. Nobody's going to say anything. We're just pressing forward. Our players don't like the taste of what happened. This is a proud program. That 2019 squad started the season strong, winning each of the first two games by more than 30 points. We'll see if the 2021 team can match that. Graham? There's nothing like the hope and promise of a new season. Thanks, Diane. But realistically, how much hope and promise is there this coming year? I had a chat with the voice of the midshipman, Pete Medhurst. He's been part of the Navy broadcast for more than two decades. And I started off with the big question of what can we expect at quarterback? You know, this was the one year uh, that, you know, Navy didn't really have an answer at that uh, position. Dalen Morris played some good football. Uh, for us at times and Xavier got opportunities uh, as the season went along and let's face it when you can run fast in a straight line like Xavier can and you have some wiggle um, that that athleticism at that position based on the way the quarterback usually is uh, is something they look forward to and hey what better way I mean you know yeah you want to beat Army but last season was for lack of a better term you know house money I mean no one's gonna really criticize you for how you played football in the 2020 season because we were dealing with the pandemic and somehow still playing a uh, college football. So great on the job training opportunity up at West Point. I thought Xavier handled himself as well as he possibly could uh, under the bright lights of that game and certainly sets himself up to be part of what I think legitimately right now is a three man competition uh, for the quarterback spot coming up here in the fall of 2021 at the Naval Academy. Yeah, well, the coaches have been a little um, guarded about uh, saying anything about who's starting. Who do you see the competition for quarterback between? Well, I think they're being guarded, but I also think they're being honest. I don't think there is a starting quarterback at this moment. I truly believe there will be legitimate competition for that job between Xavier Arline, Ty Levitai, and Masai Maynard. I believe those three young men have probably 
put themselves certainly at least going into camp uh, in a position to compete for it. But I also think at the same time, it's great that you have multiple bodies that they feel very confident about. I think they like what they're seeing from the three of them. It's not just a case of, well, we've got four or five guys on the depth chart. Somebody's got to win the job, but it's also great to have competition. You don't want to have a situation where you're just defaulting to one guy. You want all three guys to know, A, they have a chance to win the job because that makes them work that much harder knowing that they have a legitimate opportunity to potentially command this football team coming up here September the 4th against Marshall. Um, let's talk a little bit about offense because I remember Coach Niamatololo coming off the field saying you just can't win a game without offense. What's your take on the outlook for offense this season? I don't think there's any question that for Navy, it, it starts with the offensive line. And I think uh, their optimism uh, is because they've got a lot of competition on the offensive line. Uh, you've got some skilled people coming back uh, at the, the running backs, at the A's and the B's, and certainly at wide receiver right now. you got a couple of kids that may be as good as we've had on the outside in terms of being able to make explosive plays uh, on the outside. So I think that's why there's so much optimism Last year, I think you just have to throw that video and, and what happened last year. You, you throw that in the circular file, and, you know, if the only time you bring it up is if somebody, you know, files a Freedom of Information Act to try and get some of it uh, right now. It wasn't Navy football, but a lot of teams last year weren't their brand of football simply because of uh, the way things were happening in our world at that time. Uh, who do you think are going to be the players to watch? Well, there's no doubt Michael Cooper and Mark Walker on the outside. I think uh, if they played in any of the other offenses in the American Athletic Conference, and we've got some explosive offenses uh, in that league, and I think that in itself um, presents uh, – they would be first-team uh, receivers, I think, on a lot of different teams in the league because of the, the skill sets uh, that they have. So – I think whichever quarterback wins the job, they're going to have a chance to make some explosive plays uh, in the air game because of what uh, Michael and Mark bring to the table. Hey, let's talk defense just for a second. Um, Navy had its largest comeback win ever uh, last year against Tulane. Uh, uh, several games where the defense uh, delivered. Um, really impressed with what they did. Who are you watching on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I don't think there's any question. When you talk Navy defense, it starts with um, – you know, a guy that I think has potential, you know, NFL uh, type ability in Diego Fago. This is a guy that is really selfless. Um, you know, he bleeds the Navy brand. I mean, that that's those are the kind of leaders that you want on your football team. Guys that set the tone every day. Uh, you've got great experience coming back in the secondary with a guy like Kevin Brennan, uh, who's going to help keep that group, um, you know, pretty steady uh, in the back. Mitchell West ended up getting a lot of playing time alongside him as safety. Uh, because of some injuries uh, last year. So I think that helps uh, tremendously on the back end. Uh, Nicholas Straw, I think, is another guy that is, uh, you know, worth watching on the defensive side, a guy that really took advantage of some opportunities uh, at linebacker that he played on the outside last year. And I think they have a chance uh, to be pretty good again because in our league, man, if your defense can just get you three or four stops a game, that can usually be the difference. Well, that's a great segue into the matchups this year. Uh, what do you think are the key matchups uh, for Navy in the schedule this year? Well, I mean, look, let's face it. You're trying to establish yourself uh, after what happened last year. If you're a football player, you're trying to establish yourself quickly and reestablish the brand. Marshall had a great year last year. New coach in Charles Huff was the running backs coach at Alabama, takes over there. And then you have Air Force in game two. So you can't. You can't look ahead because you know Air Force is on the horizon because Marshall's good enough to, you know, to, to take your lunch and blow you out on your field uh, in, in the very first game. So I think it's two great tests to start the season uh, for the mids. Fortunately, after that, they get a week off uh, to recoup from what is always an incredibly emotional and physical game with Air Force. And then the league play starts and, you know, you go on the road to Houston – and, you know, the beauty of the Navy schedule is joining the American Athletic Conference. This is why this is why they did that, because they want to be a player every Saturday where people are saying, hey, look who Navy's playing. You've got a high profile game with Notre Dame, of course. That is always uh, on the schedule. And that's why moving to this league has raised the profile 
uh, for Navy considerably. Clearly, the Notre Dame game, always a, uh, always a big one. End of the season when you play Army on national TV in a standalone game uh, on that second Saturday in December. Brings all the eyes of college football fans uh, to the table. Well said, Pete Medhurst. Thank you. It will be exciting to see if the midshipmen can repeat their 2019 season. Plus, they have one of the most exciting players to watch in Diego Fago. We'll have a profile of Diego right here on Behind the Lines during our regular season. 